The Expert Series is brought to you by Draw Paint, the dry erase paint company that specializes in the highest quality of whiteboard walls available worldwide. Draw Paint is constantly undergoing tests and procedures to ensure industry leading, top quality products with three selections to choose from. Recruit, Unique, and Limitless are guaranteed to suit all your dry erase paint needs. with Better Homes and Gardens Metro Bokers here in Atlanta, Georgia. And I've been living in Atlanta all my life, I'm born and raised. And yeah, I've been an agent for a couple of months now. Um, it was something that I've always wanted to do since I was in high school, but um, things just happened where I wasn't able to do it, but I finally made the chance to get at it this year, so. No, that's good. At least you kind of knew what you wanted to do out of high school because a lot of people yeah. don't know that. So um, besides that, what are some of the activities that you're doing outside of work right now? Um, right now, I am working on my cosmetic line that I just launched Friday. Um, it's called Sugarland Cosmetics, and we're basically a personal care company where we have sugar scrubs, and um, we're gonna launch more products in the future, but right now we're just focusing on the sugar scrubs because that is mainly what people wanted. Yeah, very interesting. Um, another thing uh, I saw too on your Instagram is you have a top 10 uh, things to do when selling one's home. Um, do you, would you wanna like maybe take us through what you do to help like a client sell their house and all that? Yeah, so um, usually when I'm helping a client sell their home, I usually like to go see the house myself, um, of course, uh, just to see like what I'm getting myself into and how I could kind of help the client make better um, adjustments to the house maybe if they need any. Um, I like to provide them with a CMA, which is a comparative market analysis. Um, I'm not an appraiser, so I can't give them the market value for their house, but I can tell them like what other houses in their community are selling for. So I like to help them with that, those numbers. Um, I also like to basically just tell them what to expect during the process. This really gives them a clear understanding of what we're gonna go through, um, what to expect when we're do dealing with closings and attorneys. And with buyers, because sometimes buyers are going to renege, they're, they're going to change their mind during the process. Um, lenders are going to um, kind of back out as well. You know, they're not going to go through with it if they find anything wrong with the buyers. So I just like to prepare them for those kind of things and go from there. It's really different with each house and each seller. So you can't really say, oh, this is going to happen with each home you know is different so. yeah yeah i get that is it like it's usually is it usually an easy process or is it i guess it would range right with the variation of houses and stuff yeah it does range but metro brokers they are so helpful they're going to make sure every single transaction goes as smoothly as possible um they're they're also helping me along the way so we try to make it as smooth as possible yeah that's good um yeah uh, another another question we have is like uh we noticed can you tell us why hump day is your favorite day of the week oh my gosh um i love hump day because monday and tuesday is like the busiest days for me um if i could show you my schedule the list is like this long so when i make it to wednesday i can just breathe and i'm so happy to make it to wednesday um yeah, that's why it's just my favorite day of the week. It's basically like everyone's Friday almost. Yes. Because everything's kind of done with, so. Um, another thing, uh, you had an inspirational Instagram post, um, and it, the, the meaningful Mondays, what's the, motive, what's the motivation behind this kind of content? 
Well, um, before I got into real estate, I had a couple of family members that would, they knew that my interest would be real estate in the long run. And they would always come up to me asking questions. And the main question I would get would be like, what is escrow? And at that time, I didn't know what escrow was, but um, I would immediately look it up to just make it seem like I knew what I was talking about. And so when I became an agent, I'm like, you know, education is free. And if I could win everyone's trust by educating them, then I'm building my clientele easily through Instagram, you know? So that's why Meaningful Mondays came about. Um, I just want to educate people more than anything. I want them to be able to trust me and know that I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, another thing is like, uh, even with that being said, um, is that kind of one of the reasons you got into real estate or what was the real push for you getting into real estate? Um, I wanted my own house out of high school. So oh. I, I, <laughs> that was just the main thing, like getting out of my parents' house. Um, I really just used to watch a lot of HGTV in high school and I used to tell myself like, I can do that. And so that was just the push for me. Okay. Um, some of our interviewees uh, talked to us about membership they received in the past. Have you had a mentor throughout the throughout your journey so far? Is someone like to look up to or guide you kind of deal? Mm, no. Not really. You kind of just done it all yourself then. Yes. Well, wow, that's pretty impressive. So. Thank uh, you. Yeah. So, and even with that, how um, how do you self promote? Like, how do you promote yourself then, just by yourself, or trying to promote your business? Um, I really just put myself out there. That's something that I'm still learning constantly each day. Um, I, I've always been a quiet person. So each day I get out, I try to challenge myself to just talk to a stranger or introduce myself to someone just to let them know who I am. Um, making more Instagram posts. I've always been a private person posting so much every single day. This is brand new for me. I would have never done that before real estate. So yeah this is all so you utilize social media as much as you can basically definitely yeah do you, you you use hashtags and stuff like that just like the small things yeah. yes because this advertising on social media is free so yeah. take advantage of it yeah pretty much yeah, there's so many ways you can uh promote so i'm always interested to hear um what kind of ways people promote their business. Like some people run ads and stuff. So like there are methods of paying for it, but you can reach so many people. But um, I like asking because a lot of people even nowadays don't really rely on it too much because they might think it's a waste of time or it's ineffective because of how many people, like they see your ad or whatever and then they just ignore it. Um, do you typically have like a high response rate for that or? I guess it's hard to tell, you know? Yeah, it's hard to tell sometimes, but then again, Instagram has um, great feedback when you do run an ad where they will let you know like who's coming from the ad versus who's been following you and who's just responding from following you. Um, I do have good feedback as far as clicking links or who's um, coming to my profile versus who's just reading the post. So. Um, I'll run an ad some weeks and some weeks I won't. I'll just use the hashtags because most of the time the hashtags are drawing people in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that even with us, um, when we're promoting like the stuff like this, like the expert series, we're trying to use as many effective hashtags as possible. Like the hashtags are weird because you can't have those that are too vast or your stuff gets lost in it because they're like overused. So, it, it takes a little time to look into it to find the right ones to promote like whatever you're doing. So, and another question is, uh, what's the typical buying and selling process process like for uh, you and your clients? So, um, I haven't had a seller just yet, um, but buyers, I love buyers because. <laughs> 
they're so funny. Um, you have those buyers who are really serious and they're on the same path as you. They're adamant about buying a home. And then you have those buyers who are a little bit scared and they're, they're going to put their foot in the water and kind of play with you along the way. But um, usually we just go through the process of getting all of their financial information together. Um, after we've obtained that, we're ready to go and look start looking for a house once we close in on one um we put in an offer and if the offer is accepted we're heading to the closing table no that's it's a, good yeah it's really um it can be a short process if you stay on your p's and q's but it can be a long drawn out process as well so yeah but speaking okay. speaking of long processes and all that um and just like that comes to, uh, it comes to mind, like there's definitely times it's a lot harder to sell stuff and all that. Um, in terms of real estate and all that, has, have you ever had many hardships or anything that's like been like how many like giant problems you ran into and how you kind of overcame them? Um, okay, so recently I had someone who was looking to rent a home um and she was really really excited to rent this home and um unfortunately someone else came in and they decided to um rent the home faster then she wasn't moving fast enough and so the home got taken so it was really hard to kind of break that news because she was really excited for that home so that that's the most painful thing is like when the client isn't really on their game um, like you are, but you're, you're, you know, you're fighting for your client. So that's pretty hard, um, but it comes with it. So, and I make all my clients aware of that. If you don't jump on it, someone else will. So that's the hardest part. Yeah. Yeah. It's even sometimes maybe a lack of communication between a client and all that. And that's kind of going into our next question as um, like how, if social media or how, how it like affects your work, like, it's, like even just communication in general, like um, if some people have to be contacted through like Facebook Messenger or something, or like how, how does it like, you know, like how does it um, like merge in with your work? So um, a lot of people, they do want to write you in DMs, and uh, that's not how I communicate. I, I'm very serious about my work. So if I want to contact you, I'm on the phone calling you day and night, you know, and a lot of people aren't that way. They want to keep writing through DMs because social media has taken over their lives. Um, I'm a real person. I'm a woman about my business. So when I want to talk to you, I want to talk to you over the phone. I don't want to keep talking to you through Instagram. And so I think that is the only way social media has really negatively affected the business. But um, other than that, it's really been an effective tool for me. For me. Um, I've been able to reach a bunch of people through my um, Instagram page and my Facebook page. But that's about it. Um, it's really an effective tool. Yeah. Yeah. There's, you know, it's got its pros and cons that it, you know, always will. Um, uh, even with social media and all that stuff aside, like how do you balance, uh, how do you balance your like personal life with your work life? <sighs> That's hard. Um, yeah. Um, I just have to take it with me everywhere I go. You know, um, if I'm at if, if I'm at an, an off if I'm at an office meeting, I have my phone handy. You know, they allow us to have our phones not on silent because they know we have clients calling day and night. You know, we have to go to meetings and uh, classes often throughout the year just to maintain our license. And in those classes, they know that we have to have our phones on because work is nonstop in real estate. You know, you don't have a um, set times schedule, uh, like a nine to five. You can make that your hours, but it's just not realistic. So you just have to take it with you everywhere you go. You're eating lunch with a friend, keep your phone on vibrate because it's gonna ring. That client is calling, you know? Yeah. So I just 
there's a lot of jobs that are like that though. Um, yeah, you, everyone just wants to aim for like a certain amount of hours and then they can just go home and that's it. But then there are jobs that even if you're doing like landscaping or something that there's overtime and stuff like that. Like there's all these, there's like a bunch of jobs that you're constantly having to deal with clients and stuff. So it really depends on what you're in, um, that how much it affects you and stuff like that. Right. Um, is there any advice you would pass on to others that are like looking to get into real estate? Yes. Um, study and learn what you can just don't rush it you know um when i was in school i just kept trying to get to the end you know and that's not how you learn you need to take each day literally day by day second by second um and really just enjoy the time because you don't get that back when you when you're finished um as soon as you get out of real estate school, you're going to be like, what did I just learn? Because you don't remember any of that stuff. It really takes being in the field to understand it. But you really want to just take your time when you're in school and understand what you're learning. Yeah. Um, what about advice for like communication? Is there like ways people could practice that or? Yeah. Don't be scared. You know, um, no is just an answer. If you want to talk to someone, talk to them. They, the only thing they can say is yes or no. And no, it's just an answer. It's just, it's not personal. It's just an answer. Yeah. Is there any like key lessons you've learned? I mean, you've kind of like covered uh, a bunch of that stuff. Like you like enjoy the time being in that, like in school and all that. Is there anything else like key lessons that you've learned maybe personally? Um, Personally, I've learned to just really step out of my shell and really just grow, um, allowing myself to grow because I I would have never imagined to reach these heights. Um, knowing back then that I wanted to be in real estate, I never knew that real estate consisted of talking to so many people each and every day. You know, it's not like high school where everyone's clicked up or um, just not welcoming. Like literally, if I go to any real estate event, they're welcoming you with open arms. It doesn't matter which firm you're with or anything. Everyone is welcoming you because they know what you're going through already. You know, they understand you. So don't be afraid. That's literally what I've learned so much so far is to not be afraid. Yeah. That's a, that's a huge thing too with like, you know, just everything, even certain, like certain hobbies and stuff. I know for music, for a fact, there's so many people that like sing or whatever, but they're too scared to get out there. And yeah. it's like, they're very talented, but you know, like that's the communication is like a huge thing. And I, I like almost wish there was like, more to be taught in community yeah. because people really need to uh, step outside the box, you know? Yes. There's so I much waste of potential. And that, yeah, it goes with like any career or any kind of hobby or whatnot, so. Yeah, I agree. Um, so we kind of reached a section. We kind of um, asked some trending stuff some trend like things that are trending like your opinion on stuff or and even some just funner questions and stuff like that so we kind of asked everything career-wise unless you want to like if there's something else you wanted to talk about in terms of career um now is the time to no i don't have anything else <laughs> okay yeah all right so yeah since you're in atlanta uh what do you like the most about atlanta um Probably the Southern has hospitality and the culture. Okay. Is there a lot to do down there? Yes. There's something to do for every day of the week. Yeah. What, what do you tend to try to do out there? Um, so before uh, I got into real estate, probably like last year, I haven't done it in a while, but I used to go ride bikes at, at Piedmont Park. Um, that was so much fun for me. It would just allow me to clear my mind and just 
relax and take a look at the scenery. Um, a lot has changed down there within one year, honestly. So um, that's something else about Atlanta. Um, the real estate changes so often. It's amazing. Yeah. So how, is it just changed based on like the scenery or like there's been a lot of construction or something down there? Yeah, there has been a lot of construction. They're building um, hotels, apartments. Um, yeah, they've just built a lot of new things down there. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that changes. It's just every everywhere you go, like any city, if you grow up into it for a moment of time, you notice how much stuff, um, change, how, how fast things change, really. Um, I remember, like, for me, um, we used to, like, in high school, I used to do a lot of filming with my friends, and we'd film, like, different skits or whatever. And, like, we'd go to new developed neighborhoods because there's, like, no one around or the houses haven't, be, haven't been sold. Uh, and then, like, over a year, that whole thing is, like, you know, it's brand new. Like, every, every house is sold. The whole, like, there used to be a lot of lots that haven't in, like, they haven't even started building houses. And, like, even the past year, you don't even recognize the place. So, yes, we did a lot of filming there. Like, we were so accustomed to seeing, like, just all the dirt and stuff around. It was, like, an isolated area, but now it's just, like, a whole neighborhood with, like, people everywhere so yeah are you from Atlanta no no um I'm we're in Edmonton we're based or like this expert series or whatever is based in Edmonton um that was in my hometown though which is Red Deer which is like an hour south of here of Edmonton oh. so yeah kind of been in that area but um another another thing is there anything that annoys you about living in Atlanta or is it pretty good um, traffic used to annoy me, but now I just really love it. <laughs> you, like, is it still busy? Nothing's changed, but you just learned to like it? It's getting worse, actually, because a lot of people are moving here. So, um, like, the streets you used to take to cut, get back home faster, um, they're actually packed because more people are learning that way, um, since more people have moved here. So, it's more traffic than ever. But I love it, so. Yeah, I know uh, my, like, when I'm, because I'm kind of from Red Deer, it's a lot smaller than Edmonton. Uh, when I came to Edmonton, I, well, I still get frustrated with traffic. I'm still trying to get used to it. So um, the track, even, the, but I couldn't even imagine, imagine in Atlanta, I feel like it'd be a lot worse than here. Yeah. But it tra is. traffic's one of those things, like, you just got to, like, get used to it. Yeah. You do. And you just start to see more things as you're like going slow. You know, you look out and you see more buildings, more restaurants, things like that. So it's yeah, nice. not in a rush. You can appreciate what's around you. Yeah. Um, so yeah, another question. What would you do if you were in charge of like for a day in Atlanta? Like if you could change stuff or um I put all of the homeless people in hotel. That's a good choice. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you can do whatever you want. If you're in charge yeah. of the whole place, like, yeah. I mean, I feel like if I, yeah, yeah I would want to do something about traffic personally. <laughs> make more roads, but that's always a pain. So, yeah. And yeah, um, that's, bunch of those are a bunch of questions about Atlanta we have like some trend trending questions at the moment so uh, with Atlanta being the home of artists such as Usher, Gucci Mane, Outkast and many others do you think your city has been the best hip-hop music scene in the in the country or yes. one of the bigger ones? Yes definitely um Atlanta is always evolving with new hip hop artists, and I think it's incredible. Um, people are actually moving here just to get on the hip hop scene. Um, uh, the rap culture is improving. I can remember being in high school, and um, Young Thug was in my high school one day, and I had no clue who he was. Um, but when I got out of high school, I remember people saying like, um, do you remember when Young Thug was at our school? And I was like, that was Young Thug, you know? <laughs> but it's funny now because 
you never knew who these people were. They were just like underground artists at the time. And now they're like all over the world. Everyone knows their name. So I think Atlanta is the best place for music and we deliver great artists. Yeah. So you're saying Young Thug, did he, he went to your school? No, I think his cousin went to my school, but he was just there one day and he, you know, his style has always been unique. So yeah, um, he stood out at the time, but everyone knew who he was, but I didn't, I didn't know who he was. And so, um, it wasn't until later I knew who he was, but I knew his style then. So yeah, it's kind of, yeah, with the music, um, it's kind of crazy how some of these artists, like you're probably familiar with Billie Eilish, how mm -hmm. she just came out of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. Like it, it's, I feel like it has a lot to do with luck. Um, like, like who hears your music first? and like falls in love with it right off the bat that they just spread it around but like it's crazy how some of these artists like one year they're just like you don't know who they are at all and then the next year they're like worldwide or whatnot and yeah, yeah. Atlanta, like atlanta you see a lot of that so yeah i love that yeah uh what music genres uh so you, you like hip-hop like is there any others that you're like kind of interested in or what um, yeah, I love R&B as well. R &B. So, yeah, and I did it before, actually. It took this year for me to realize that I like R&B. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I haven't really listened to too much of that, but I feel like that's, a, that's that one thing you got to, like, kind of look into. Maybe give it, like, a try. I've listened to a bit. There, I know there's a Toronto artist. I don't know the name of them, but they had an album. I was like, oh, this is this is interesting. Not what I yeah. normally listen to, but. Yeah, exactly. You just have to give it a chance. Yeah, basically. Um, another thing, I guess it's more of a, I don't know, you're one side or the other, but are you iPhone or Android? iPhone. iPhone? What yeah. Do you, what do you like about iPhones? The cameras. You can't, okay, yeah. yeah. But do you have issues? Like, I know that I, I have an iPhone. I kind of want to switch, to be honest. Uh, I find the batteries are terrible on them. Yeah, okay. So that, I can speak on that. Um, the, recently, I bought um, the black screen protector on the accident. And so I've been having to keep the brightness up, like, all the way. And my phone battery has been dying like every single day because the brightness has been up. So that's been really terrible. Um, but I was actually looking at the Google Pixel phone because that camera is amazing. Have you seen it? Uh, yeah, I've seen pictures of it, yeah. Yeah, so that, I may get that phone because I love that camera, so. Yeah. I don't know. Some of these new phones are, yeah. They're interesting, but they're really expensive. That's the problem with them, so. Yeah. Um, what iPhone is it that you have? The Gen XS. Oh, you have, okay. So, and it still has the, uh, the adapter? Yeah. For like the headphones and stuff? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the one I, that has like. I, I used to have the iPhone 7. But then uh -huh. that's the first iPhone generation with the adapter, and I kept losing that thing. So I went back to six. So I still have this. <laughs> that's why I'm like, I'm looking to upgrade, but I'm, I'm definitely not getting an iPhone because I don't want to deal with that again. So. Yeah, I don't blame you. It's kind of overrated now. Yeah. Um, I guess uh, moving on to the next question. Uh, what do you think about the ongoing trend of like plant-based food products and the wave of like the Beyond Meat Burger? Um, it's really mind blowing. You know, I never thought I would see the day where KFC would sell Beyond Meat. Um, yeah, it's really just mind blowing. Um, I have a cousin who is vegan and she owns a vegan bakery and, um, it's just strange, you know, to see that. But people really love it. I mean, Atlanta has become a capital, really, 
for vegan food um, along with California. So it's really interesting. Yeah, it is. Have you had any of it? Tried it or? Yeah, I've tried her pastries, my cousin's pastries that are vegan, and it really tastes the same. Um, it actually tastes really good, um, but I can't give up meat. I'm just not that strong. Yeah, you know? I'm the same. I'm the same. Uh, I've never tried it. Um, I hear like a lot of it does taste similar, but like, of course, I've never tried it, so I wouldn't know for sure. Um, it is more expensive, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. It is expensive. Yeah. How much would it be, or how much was it? Uh, what 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 was it you ate at your friend's? Uh, my cousin, she sells cookies. She bakes cakes oh. and everything. So I ate it for free. But um, I'm not really sure of her prices. Um, you could probably check it out. Her Instagram name is Freebirds Vegan Bakery, I think. Hang on, let me look it up. It, I would feel like it'd be more of an uh, expensive process, though. Like, yeah. Um, so when I when I go to the grocery store, most of like gluten free products they are really expensive, like um, flour and things like that. They're really expensive. Um, yeah, her name is Freebirds Vegan Bakery. Do you okay. see that? Yeah. But yeah, she does a wide variety of desserts and everything. She's really doing great in the vegan community. Yeah, that's good. Um, another question. Uh, there is the the movie The Joker. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you've seen it. No, I want to. You have? Okay. Uh, but there's been a lot of controversy around it because it does kind of have like a lot to do with mental illness and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, obviously that's kind of, I don't want to like spoil anything. So I'm trying to like simplify this. Um, but yeah, it's about like, it's about Arthur, the main guy or whatever, but yeah, he's got a mental illness stuff, but some of the actions he has in the movie, people think um, they're trying to justify some of it. So there's a lot of people saying that this, um, this movie's influencing violence and stuff. Um, what do you, how do you feel just like, like what are your thoughts on just hearing that? Uh, like I it's just it's, a movie? <laughs> I think that's inappropriate. Um, I don't know, I have to see the movie. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of hard to talk about when you haven't seen it, but yeah. there, there has been a lot of that stuff and, you know, it's one of those things, it's like, it's just a movie, it's meant for entertainment, it's not meant for to spread a message or influence stuff. It's kind of like how certain people say um, video games or like Call of Duty influence violence or something, because I find that kind of, I kind of find that ridiculous, to be honest. Yeah, I like, don't know. Like, I, like do, do you play games or no? No, I used to. I haven't in a while. What what games did you play? Um, oh God. Um, I have a PlayStation Four, and it's called. It came with the PlayStation. It's a red game. I can't think of the name, honestly. A red game. Um, it's a girl. It it was a boy at first, and then it was a girl, and they're like trying to find this treasure. Mm, I don't think um, it is. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know the name, honestly. I can't think of it. Was it, it was a, uh, like, what was the, was it, like, rated M or what? Like, for? I have no clue. It's like, it was, like, three different series of the game. Oh, God, what is the name of this game? Hang on a sec, it's in the other room. Yeah. Okay, it's called Uncharted. 
Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm started. I used but to even, love that game. Even some people would say, like, a game like that could still influence violence and stuff. Like, people can really stretch things now about, yeah. like, what you play. And I just find, I don't know, me personally, I just think it's kind of, I find games to be more of an escape, if anything. People wanted, they played to have fun. It's not nothing serious. Yeah. No. But, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I think it just depends on the person. Or I think games are inappropriate for kids, um, especially small kids, you know. Um, they're like, they get addicted to things really easily. So I think it's important to kind of wing them away and make them go outside more because um, that's what we used to do as kids, so. Yeah, uh, I agree with kids because they're like, their mind's still developing. So yeah. they're learning as they do stuff. Like you can't give a kid GTA. Yeah. No. Because and, they think that some of the stuff in that game would be justified to like, oh yeah, I can do this or whatever. But uh, yeah. more so on the topic, it's more people like adults that play games and stuff. And there's still all that like people might say it might alter someone's not or mind or something like that. But I don't know. It's a weird it's a weird topic. I know kids, it's definitely out of the picture because kids are constantly learning things. Like, they yeah. they see something on a movie, they might think it's justified just because they saw it somewhere else. Yes. But yeah, that's, yeah, that's another issue with social media. It's the pros and cons of social media and who gets their hands on it, so. 